Let's take a look now at trig functions of any angle. Before we take a look at the fancy table I've made for you to reference, let's just remember our unit circle. So we had a unit circle, and typically when we were looking at an angle of theta, we would then draw the perpendicular down and we would be dealing with a right triangle. And so remember that this point was x comma y because this distance was x and this distance was y. And then obviously theta was this angle in the middle. And all of that works great. Uh, it continues to work great when we start thinking about opposite over hypotenuse, which we just learned. This is r, the radius. So y over r makes perfect sense for opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine was adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's x over r and so on. So now what we want to do is we want to take a look at what happens when we still have the unit circle, but now let's say we're looking at this theta. So this is now a little bit different, right? But it's not, because here's why. Here, I can just draw a triangle on the opposite side. And what I'm going to do is look at this, which is theta prime, we're going to call it, theta prime. And so then I can see from here that I can still deal with these with a right triangle. And so really the only thing you now need to understand is what sign is appropriate. So if you'll recall, all of the ordered pairs in the first quadrant are positive because that's positive on the X and positive on the Y. So this is the first quadrant. In the second quadrant, if you'll recall, we have a negative X, but we have a positive Y. So negative X, positive Y, which means here in the third quadrant, I have a negative and a negative. So I'm going left on the X, down on the Y. And then in the fourth quadrant, I have positive on the X, but negative on the Y. So if I remember this, and R is always going to be positive. So if I remember this, then that will help me to know um, what sign my function should have, because we're going to essentially simplify things to find the Y value and the X value based on this other reference angle. Let's take a look at an example together to make sure we understand exactly what we're talking about. So let's say I have a point P down here in the fourth quadrant, which is 20 comma negative 21. That means I'm looking at this ray and my angle theta would be this distance, but that's more complicated than we want it to be. So again, we're just going to call this guy theta prime. And so from here, I'm now going to draw that triangle that we're used to. And I'm going to find sine and cotangent of theta prime. So what do I need? I need y and I need r. Well, if you'll recall, 20 is x and negative 21 is y. So all I have to do is find R, which is the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So I can say 20 squared plus 21 squared is equal to hypotenuse squared, or we'll call it R. So 20 squared is 400, 21 squared is 441, oops, equals R squared. Of course, it doesn't want to erase for me now. So 841 is equal to r squared, and when I take the square root, I get plus or minus 29, but if you'll recall, r is always positive. So even though technically I got positive and negative 29, I'm only worried about the positive r value. So now I can find sine of theta, which is y, y which is negative 21 over r, 29. And I can find cotangent of theta, which is x over y, so 20, 
over negative 21. And again, you are welcome to take a look at the signs of these. Remember, this would be positive, positive. This would be uh, negative, positive. This would be negative, negative. And this would be positive, negative. We've already accounted for that negative. So notice I did end up with a negative on each of those values. So all students take calculus is an acronym to help you remember which one should be positive in that quadrant. So A is all, all sine, cosine, tangent are all positive, and obviously they're reciprocals also. S means sine is positive, and the others are negative. T means tangent is positive, and the others are negative. And C means cosine is positive, and the others are negative. Let's take a look at one more practice. You can try this one on your own. When you're ready, press play to see how you did. So again, if you'd like to draw the picture, it's obviously very helpful. Negative 3, 4 is our point P, which means I'm looking at that ray. And here's theta, which means I, again, want to drop a perpendicular and look instead at theta prime. Now this value is negative 3, that's the x value. The y value is positive 4. And then I need to find r, and again, r is always positive. So negative 3 squared plus 4 squared is equal to r squared. We have 9 plus 16 is equal to r squared. 25 is r squared, so r is plus or minus 5 but we only care about the positive value. So that's our value of five. So now if I want to find sine of theta, remember it's really just sine of theta prime. So I'm looking at opposite over hypotenuse. And then cosine would be adjacent over hypotenuse and tangent would be opposite over adjacent. And then I would look at cosecant, which is just the reciprocal of sine, and secant, which is the reciprocal of cosine, and cotangent, which is the reciprocal of tangent. And that's all I need to do. I don't know what video I'm going to make next for a review of trig functions, so I'm just going to say to be determined based on deficiencies I see in my students. So hopefully there are many more to come.